lovely colouring friends, my name is Amanda and this is my channel Amanda Colours. I am here today with my beautiful little friend Emerald and she says hello. Uh, she has taken some time out from swimming to come and say hi to you all and to help me introduce this video. So she's going to uh, toddle off. <laughs> Um, and I am going to let you know that today I am going to be sharing um, my process of how I colour using um, an alcohol bar marker base and then um, add in the details with pencil. It was actually requested quite a while ago um, and this is sort of the first chance I've had to get to it. So I appreciate your patience. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to share my fun fact, and that is that female budgerigars, or budgies, as we call them here in Australia, um, actually choose their mate based on intelligence. Um, so scientists have been studying their behaviours, and yeah, the female budgies um, watch the males and see... Uh, you know, watch their behaviours and see if they're intelligent in the way that they problem solve and things like that. And that's how they choose their mate. It's not based on their appearance or their mating dance or anything like that. Um, it's based on intelligence. So I can relate to female budgies and maybe that's why I'm still single. <laughs> Waiting for that intelligent male to come along. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, so let's get on with the video. I am going to be colouring in Camellia Angel Cova's 50 Vacation Miniatures, and this will be the first page coloured in this book, so that's fun. And I am going to colour the title page. Um, one, because I don't want this video to be really long for you. Um, and two, because over on the Facebook group that Disney makes colouring and I share, the group is called Colour With Us, um, yeah, on Facebook. Uh, every Tuesday, we have a title page Tuesday tag, um, which, you know, encourages all of us to get these little title pages done because they're often overlooked in our books. Um, so if you'd like to join the group, the link is down in the description and we would absolutely love to have you. Um, and today when I'm recording is Tuesday, so it's the perfect time to do it. So I'm just going to grab a backing page because I always seem to forget to do that. Um, and yeah, basically the idea when basing with markers is to use the lightest color for that object that you want. And then you add depth and dimension by using pencils. So for example, if I wanted this umbrella to be aqua, I would use a very light aqua, <clears throat> excuse me, for um, coloring it in marker and then I would add darker versions of aqua and teal to add in the shadow. Now there are two ways you can do it. You can also leave white area um, that then creates a bright highlight or you can color the whole thing in the base color that you want and the highlights won't be as bright because it will be a color. Um, I actually tend to color the whole thing um, because you can come back in with a good quality white pencil and add in some highlights, like some really bright white highlights. Um, but I don't even always often do that. I just will use the, um, the light color. So what I thought I might do is go through and um, do a speed color of all of the... Um, the alcohol marker um, and then come back and talk you through the process with the pencils because the base layer really is just a very basic color. Um, 
yeah, so I will be using my Copic markers, but this process works for any kind of alcohol marker, or you could even use water-based markers if you like. Um, water-based markers do tend to give you a much more streaky look, um, but they're ideal when you are coloring on a book that has a picture printed on the other side, because water-based markers don't tend to bleed through the page. So yes, I'm going to add some music and speed this up, and I'll be back once the alcohol layer is finished. So that is the base of the alcohol markers. Now I have left some bits on it. Yes, I have left some bits white uh, because I'm going to use um, metallic markers and stickles and different things like that at the end. But now that we are at this stage, move my markers out of the way. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, I've used very light versions of the various colors. I'm going to use my Artex pencils um, and go in and add some detail. So basically, we just want to be adding in some darker versions of the colors. So again, you can do this really, really simply by using one pencil, one color to add in detail. And because this is a small picture I think that's what I will actually do but of course the fundamentals of coloring still apply so you could use many many different pencils to build up layers of color and to build up um you know uh like rich tones and and things like that um but basing with alcohol markers is a very quick way to at least get the base color down um, and you don't have to do quite as many layers as with pencils and to be honest I don't actually use this method very often because in some ways it almost feels like coloring the same thing twice and twice as much work but sometimes that's okay and sometimes that's what you want to do so um, yeah I'm just going to go in with um, some pencils and start adding in some 
more detail and I'm going to zoom it in maybe even a little bit more and actually I'll bring you closer so that I can reach a bit better seeing that's the point of my new tripod okay <laughs> so I'm just going in with this pencil adding in shadow so anywhere where the shadow would be cast adding in this darker yellow and the good thing about um having already done the base is you can go through and do all of the same color at the same time because you know you've already worked out what color is going where so in that regard it's a bit of a time saver but yeah it's um it is a process that takes longer than just a straight alcohol color or a or i guess it is quicker than a, a base um than a pencil color because you are doing that quicker base so that's the yellow then let's go in with hmm, a darker aqua teal color. Add in some shadow to the umbrella. So I felt like doing this page because um, I'm still kind of feeling in holiday mode after the cruise and also because um, we're only in the second week of spring here in Sydney and the end of this week is going to be about 35 degrees Celsius which is almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So all the predictions of a very hot summer, I think, are proving to be true because we're not even in summer and it's getting very warm. Um, well, by the end of this week, it will be hot. <laughs> and um, they're also predicting it to be quite a bad bushfire season. And we had one just a couple of summers ago and it was just devastating to our wildlife and a number of our more rural areas. Um, so they've already started doing um, what we call back burning, which um, kind of is controlled burning that the fire service do um, in areas that didn't burn in the last big bushfires uh, in order to try to minimise the natural bushfires and uh, reduce the fuel that is available for any natural fires um, to try and keep people safe but the air quality here at the moment is not great because of all the back burning that they're doing uh, so people with allergies and asthma and that sort of thing have been advised to stay indoors which is fine by me because I don't really like being outdoors all that much anyway I like looking at the outdoors from inside <laughs> But yes, I'm a bit, I don't know, I'm an indoor girl, especially when it's hot. So now I'm just adding in some purple. So as you can see, it's quite an effective um, process. Like even just using the one color, you start to get a nice effect. And um, if you're just doing it quickly like this, it is a quick process. And you can get a lovely result. All right, the door. I wanted to do fun, fun colors. I probably could have gone brighter, but I wanted to show you the basic concept of using light colours 
and then adding the darker colors as shadow. Oops. So you may have seen on um, Instagram, if you don't follow me over there, I'd love to see you. Uh, my handle is at amanda.colors. And um, yeah, if you've been over there, you might have seen that I have been doing tutorials lately and improving my own skills. And I recently discovered um, Kit and Clouder through a, uh, a subscriber here on YouTube, actually. They suggested I take a look. And um, Elise uh, is an Australian and she runs Kit and Clouder. And um, she runs tutorials with, um, with markers and with pencils. But um, I'm excited to learn more about markers because I have been using them for a long time. But, um, but everything that I've done with markers, I've just taught myself. So it'd be great to get some tips. And I have already done one of her classes and you can see the result of that on my Instagram page. Um, yeah, and I've already learnt some great tips, so that's really cool. So don't be afraid to give tutorials and classes a go. They're a great way to learn and you don't have to be perfect. Just give it a go. That's my motto anyway because perfectionism is something I really struggle with and I'm really trying to get away from that. So adding some shadow here to, we call these thongs in Australia. I know that other places call something else that, but we call them thongs because they're made from thonging. Um, well, they were originally, now they're made from plastic, but um, yes. They're thongs, not flip-flops, not jandals, not sandals. They're thongs. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's my little rant. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I just get a bit tired of... Um, there are some very dominant cultures in this world. And um, through TV and... Uh, and movies and things were so indoctrinated with the way this one particular culture says things and does things and sometimes it's just nice to enjoy your own culture and not always having to be catering to that particular culture anyway um yes so they're thongs and you can't change my mind, and I'm not being rude. Um, okay, let's do the fence. So, what else can I share? Uh, This morning I went and had a whole host, like it was a big long list of um, blood tests to prepare for a procedure I'm having at the beginning of uh, October. I have to go and have some other tests as well, but I had also had to have an ECG and some sort of... Um, a breath test that measures bacteria in your gut or something. I don't know. I've never had to do that before, but that was interesting. So, yes, did that this morning. So I'm another step closer to being ready for that. I'll have to start the liver shrinking diet this coming Monday. Not really looking forward to that, but there you go. Because basically I have to do those um, those protein diet shakes only 
for two weeks. Um, some steamed vegetables and lean, lean protein is allowed for one meal a day, but pretty much I am just, yeah, just on the protein shakes. And I've done it before for a different procedure I had done. So I know I can do it. I actually had to do it for seven weeks, which was ugh, awful, but I did it. So yeah, I know I can. I just don't really want to, to be honest, <laughs> but it's necessary. So I will do it. I'll be a good girl, do what the doctor asks me to do. And then in about 90 days or so, um, I will be having another procedure to help with some women's issues that I've been having, which will hopefully help a lot and not be sapping all the iron and energy out of my body every couple of weeks. Um, because uh, fibromyalgia and arthritis and sleep apnea and all the other things I have going on I had enough without dealing with that every couple of weeks too. So, yes, we'll be doing that. And then hopefully um, we'll be on track for doing a bit better with my health in general. I also have to go to the dentist tomorrow, which I'm not really looking forward to. Um, sorry, Shell. I know that, um, Shell from Shell's Coloring Journey, I know that you're a dentist and I'm sure if I went to see you, it would be a whole different story. Actually, my dentist is really lovely. I just have had some really bad experiences with other dentists in the past, so I don't really like going. But that's not this current dentist's fault, so I should get over it, really. But there you go. So... I'm just going to grab some stickles and some other embellishments and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've grabbed some fun bits and pieces. I have a metallic Sharpie here that I'm going to use on the hinges and the door hardware. I like adding all these bits and pieces. It's a bit of fun. Adds some extra interest to your pages. And to be honest, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I, um, I got a bit caught up when I first started my channel and was buying all the premium products. My Cop I've had a few people comment on my Copic markers. Um, and just to, I shouldn't really have to, but just to clear it up, I've actually been collecting them for like 20 years, literally, um, since I first started design school. So, you know, yes, they are expensive and yes, I have a lot of them, but I didn't just get them all in one go. Um, I, yeah, so Sometimes it's okay for people to have nice things um, without being made to feel bad about it. Um, but other things like the stickles, I mean, I really could have bought um, just other glitter glue. I didn't have to get stickles and I, you know, I have it now. But that is something that I'm like, well, I really could have. I didn't need to buy the Stickles brand. But to be honest with the Copics, they're so much better than any other marker I've tried. Um, I haven't tried Ohuhu and I know a lot of people really love them. So I'm going to guess that they're pretty good. Um, but all the others I've tried, just there's no comparison. So I say go for the Copics if you can afford them. Build your collection up over time and enjoy them. And you don't have to apologize for it. Uh, 
Um, what am I, what else am I going to do? Let's do, I want it to contrast. So I'm going to do the orangey stickles for in the details here. And to be honest, as long as you're not hurting anyone, you really shouldn't have to apologize for um, for doing something you love. Um, and that's something that I am learning. So, yeah. And you know, now my circumstances have significantly changed. I really don't have much of an income at all because of my health. And... Um, I'm just not able to buy things anymore. So in some ways, it's nice that I have these things to enjoy now because, um, yeah, I don't have the money to be buying much of anything, let alone premium products. So there you go. It's interesting how life turns out, isn't it? So once these run out, I will just have to buy the cheap stuff. And that's okay. I feel like I'm rambling, sorry. We're almost done. Come on. Now I'm just going, excuse me, sorry about that. I'm just going to add in some white highlights. Uh, through here. And on the umbrella. windmill or pinwheel on the shell and what else I feel like more on the umbrella oops Maybe on the rocks. But that's basically it, my friends. That is how I color using alcohol markers. And pencils so again basically you just go through add your lightest color with your alcohol markers um, use you can leave some white area if you would like um, and then you add in your details with pencils so hopefully that was helpful um, and as I said you can add in as much detail or as little detail as you want it's really up to you and your imagination and how much time you want to spend on the page so yeah this was just a quick example but I, I do hope it was helpful I hope you learned some tips feel free to ask me any questions you might have down in the comments or leave any other tips and tricks that you have for using pencils and markers um, in the comments also please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because that would just mean so much to me um yeah i have had a great time doing this and i will see you in the next video bye